Could I too uh, thank uh, all of you for coming along and attending uh, this debate today. Uh, we have a very high attendance, over 120 people had booked to come to it, so I thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, this is a very, very important issue and one that has uh, uh, two sides to it, uh, and uh, I don't think we'll get consensus here today. But uh, I hope the debate is going to be informative in the first instance. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, we all know that the future of GMO cultivation has caused heated debate across Europe with strong opinions, as I say, on both sides of the argument. Uh, I believe it's vital for farmers, consumers and the environment that the current impasse we have in decision making on GMOs and their authorisation and indeed uh, whether farmers can plant them or whether consumers can buy them in the shops or not, as the case may be, it's very, very important that we try and make sure that we see, see progress take place on this important issue. The aim of the debate is to hear from the scientists on both sides of the argument, but I also should point out it's not for us as politicians to decide in the science. I am not a scientist. Corinne is certainly not a scientist either. And none of my colleagues, I think, with maybe one or two exceptions, are scientists. We're elected to listen to the evidence and take decisions based on the evidence we hear from the scientists on what the best, economic, uh, the best scientific facts are and what the recommendations might well be. Uh, we should also remember that decisions on food safety must be based on the best scientific evidence available. If we move away from that central principle, I believe that society runs the risk of making decisions on food safety based on what is popular rather than on the facts. Uh, and once we get into that type of territory, uh, as certainly we discovered in the United Kingdom over the BSE crisis, then you are in very, very difficult territory whatsoever. It's impossible to give reassurance to consumers, taxpayers, uh, about the safety of the food that they eat. So scientific fact must be fundamental uh, in the decision-making process that, uh, elect that politicians are elected to put in place. Uh, it is our role as politicians to come to a view of whether, uh, I guess, EFSA has listened to and taken into account all of the scientific opinion and I mean all of the scientific opinion, in making their decisions on the safety of GM crops for both, environmental, for both the environment and the public health. We're here to decide on the evidence that we might hear, whether EFSA evaluations are robust and reflect the scientific consensus, and whether those scientists who disagree with the consensus have had their views properly taken into account, properly evaluated before EFSA come to a final decision. And it seems to me that's the fundamental question that we want to address here today. Has all the scientists' views been listened to? Have they been properly evaluated? And before decisions are taken, have they been properly listened to and fed into that decision-making process? Because at the end of the day, we need to come to a view and make decisions. I don't believe that we can keep stalling on this forevermore when the rest of the world is moving ahead and using this uh, new science and new technology, uh, not only to benefit uh, economically farmers, but more importantly, to benefit the environment. And that's a big, big uh, issue that we must address. If we could move on firstly to, to our first speaker, uh, and, and really it's to set some context about in regard to what happens in Europe uh, and what happens in the United States and other countries who have been using this technology uh, for a good number of years. Our first speaker is Professor Martina Newell McLaughlin, a good Scottish name, dare I say, although she's Irish and we'll forgive her for that. Uh, She's director uh, of the System-Wide Biote Biotechnology Research and Education Program at the University of California, Davis. She's published numerous scientific articles and books, mainly in the areas of plant biotech. The latest one, her latest book was Evolution of Biotechnology, from Natufians, which I have no idea what that is, to nanotechnology. In 2005, she was awarded the Irish America Science Award as one of the top contributors to Irish American science. Could I ask you to make your presentation? Uh, you have 15 minutes. Uh, we've run over time already, but uh, we will try and stick to the 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to be very brief because uh, it's been a long session and uh, we've all heard the points of view and Corinne summed up uh, some of them very, very well. 
But it's very clear from the discussion here that I think there's a united view that uh, here in the room that all the decisions on food safety must be based in science and fact. I think that's a pretty fundamental principle uh, that we all s start from, and, and, and that's, that's very, very important. I think the second point, and, and the, whole, the whole point of this exercise this afternoon, was to try and establish whether EFSA have been willing to listen, uh, listen to, in, uh, willing to engage, uh, with those who hold very diametrically different views and have real questions and challenges about process uh, and about uh, the, the whole authorization process. I think we heard that they have been listened to. Uh, they have taken on board some of the criticisms, but clearly there are still areas where there are disagreement. And I don't think in any democracy you can ever have consensus. Uh, there will always be uh, these uh, different views. But the most important thing, I think, that I and Corinne want, wanted to establish was that at the very least EFSA was open, listening and willing to engage and take on board some of the criticisms because otherwise we can't make progress on this issue uh, whatsoever. I think we also uh, heard today uh, just a little bit of context from uh, Professor uh, McLaughlin, uh, our Irish American friend, <laughs> uh, who demonstrated where the rest of the world is in the use of these new technologies and gave us some context uh, about it. And whether we like it or not, there's a great experiment going on uh, in the rest of the world that we are stepping aside from at the moment. Uh, and indeed, in terms of long-term studies and that, we're 20 years into that in terms of where the USA and some of these other countries are. Uh, and qu quite clearly, it won't take long before uh, it's established whether there are, there are any real risks or, what, or otherwise. I think from her presentation, it's clear that Europe has the most robust uh, authorization procedures of anywhere in the world. I don't think there is, a, there is anyone going to dispute uh, that point of view. And I think it's worth remembering that there is no such thing as zero risk. You're all at risk sitting here. The roof may fall in you. You may walk out this building, cross the road, and get knocked down by a bus. So zero risk, and, and being able to prove that there is no risk whatsoever, uh, there are propositions that clearly are untenable. And I think we should have that in the back of our mind in discussing uh, a risk-based approach to any new technology, to any uh, new uh, methods and practices that uh, the humankind uh, develops. Uh, the objective uh, of this, again, was to make sure that we debate on the basis of facts. And I think John Daly and his contribution made it very clear that he's willing to engage in that debate, provided it's on facts and, and scientific evidence. And that is very, uh, very important. My last point is the benefits to society. Consumers are rightly concerned in Europe about the technology. Well, there is no two doubts of that. Every survey suggests that. Uh, and at the moment, uh, it's the fear that's overcoming uh, the, the scientific facts and, and, and the best scientific uh, a, a opinion. And fear is an easy one for politicians to play. Very easy game. Uh, and we all have tended to use it in the past. Uh, I'm always a great believer in the politics of hope, and I hope that on this one, po the politics of fear can be overcome, and we can see some hope, some uh, decent discuss discussion about how we progress as a society using these new technologies in the future. Uh, that that's the kind of discussion we have, and that's the objective we all want to, to try and arrive at. So, a final thank you to you, the audience, because you've been great. You've asked all the hard questions. Big thank you to all the con contributors here who gave of their time, came along and, and spoke to us. And with that, can I just ask you to give everyone a big round of applause, yourselves and the contributors, because it's been an excellent time. Two final points. Uh, there's a gentleman here called Mr. Vivian Moses who wishes to give the Commissioner a letter on behalf of, of, a, of a range of scientists from around Europe. Uh, and I'll, if you could do it just immediately after I conclude. Secondly, the free drink is on uh, the fifth floor, and you take the main elevator to floor five. Please don't get uh, lost. There's quite a lot of alcohol to be consumed. Thank you very much indeed.